Hey guys, David Lynn, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about a trending new topic. It's called exosomes. When you look at the PubMed search and we look at the Google searches since last year, it's almost a exponential growth when it comes to searches for exosomes. So in this video, I'll talk about exosomes, what they are, how they are made, how they are refined, how they're used by dermatologists, plastic surgeons, and also cosmetic physicians, what they can benefit or what they can do for your skin, but also importantly, the studies uh, and whether they're worth it or not. So exosomes, what are they? They're basically tiny vesicles which are produced by cells. All cells produce exosomes of some sort, and it's a mediator of cell-to-cell -cell communication. So basically, with a cell, you can have tiny buds of messages and the messages could be things like encoded mRNA, they can be proteins, they can be lipids, uh, they can be basically cytokines and inflammatory mediators which communicate or allows the cell to communicate with another cell. So for example you might have a keratinocyte or something like a fibroblast, a skin cell or a collagen producing cell and they may secrete these exosomes to tell another cell to basically make some more collagen, renew the skin increase the turnover. So there's the good and the bad. You can have good cells, for example, like your fibroblast, to increase the amount of collagen and elastin and hence will reduce um, skin wrinkles and photoagent. Or you can have exosomes in bad cells, for example, something like a basal cell or squamous cell carcinoma that mediates to another cell to reproduce in with this wrong signaling and hence cause more problems, in other words, tumors or cancers. So exosomes have to be purified in their natural state and obviously healthy individuals because we do not want nasty cells within that vesicle and that's employed into the ampule itself. So where are these derived? They're basically three sources. You can have plant exosomes, you can have mesenchymal cell exosomes are basically from your umbilical cord and then you can have something from your bone marrow. So different companies have different ways of isolating these exosomes. They're purified and they're packed into an ampule. Each ampule contains between 5 to 12 billion exosomes and they are packaged um, in a sterile manner. So most of the time you need to mix it, some come pre-mixed. They do have a shelf life and studies show that there's a degradation within that ampule of about 30% in six to 12 months. So it has to be, generally speaking, has to be kept refrigerated. Different countries will have different laws. In Australia and the US, exosomes cannot be injected. They can only be applied topically, which herein lies the problem because each exosome itself is quite large. It's around 100 to 120 nanometers. So that can't penetrate into the skin itself because of skin's barrier function. In other words, we've got the stratum corneum, the epidermis, and that acts as a barrier to the penetration of exosomes. So exosomes need to exert the effects by going into the deeper layer of skin and hence require a delivery system. And the delivery system generally can be something like microdermabrasion, which only penetrates probably about 10 microns of the skin at most. And some people use salt abrasion on top of that, not dermabrasion but salt abrasion to increase another 10 to 20 microns but by far the most popular is your microneedling and the microneedling can be done with pens can be done with rollers or it can be done with stampers so this breaches the top layer of the skin and allows the exosomes to penetrate into the deeper dermal layer of the skin another novel way of increasing absorption is to use something like a co2 laser or carbon dioxide laser delivered in fractional beams and that can absorb or can have a i guess a reservoir with the char tissue there with the area of ablation and coagulation that the exosomes can penetrate into the deeper layer of skin. Another novel solution is something called RFM or radiofrequency microneedling. You can use radiofrequency microneedling with less heat or you can use radiofrequency microneedling with a longer pulse duration to affect the deeper layers of skin but also at the same time provide these micro channels of which ex exosomes can um, penetrate into the deeper layers of skin. I personally use RFM, but I also use it with something called um, a fusion tip, which is from Sinusure, which basically creates positive pressure, almost pushing the fluid down into the micro um, needle channels and hence increasing the absorption, in theory, of exosomes. So once in the dermis, what, the, what do exosomes do? Exosomes basically exert their packets or packets of information to other cells, in theory. And what can this do? This can reduce the amount of photoaging. So when we talk about things like wrinkles, enlarged pores, damage or sun damage, pigmentation, in theory, with the packets of information which exosomes harness or they have, they can basically create a cellular response that can 
aid in rejuvenation of the cell line itself. So in the context of fibroblasts, it can manufacture collagen. In the context of keratinocytes, it can normalize the keratinocytes. It can also increase the turnover of keratinocytes and hence it may help with skin rejuvenation. There are also theories that it can also affect the melanocytes. So when we're talking things like melasma, pigmentation, exosomes may normalize the cellular function of these um, particular cell lines. Now the downside about exosomes is this. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it has not been proven robustly. Now, the marketing department of many of these uh, exosome companies will show you a graph showing the exponential search um, for exosomes and the amount of papers that come out. A lot of these papers are white papers. So the white papers are the ones which have very loose clinical data. It's not that I'm saying it's wrong. It's that these papers, you need to start somewhere. And it can be something like a theory or a hypothesis that exosomes can modulate cellular function, that can rejuvenate skin. But in order to have, I guess, more scientific data, I think there's a lot more robust studies need to be done. So we are at the dawn of exosomes, and I think there are many more studies that need to be completed in many more years. A lot of the uh, literature now, when you look at exosomes, I know I don't know how they do this, but they just showed the before and after. They go before, check it out after, this patient was treated with something like microneedling or RF microneedling or CO2 and look at the after effects. There's no control. So in order to do good studies, you need the control. You need to do half the side, for example, with exosomes in the same delivery and the other half with just the delivery mechanism. Because much like PRP was, for example, 10 years ago when everyone heralded it as a miraculous treatment. When, it, when you look at the actual studies, the split face studies, the split face randomized blinded studies, there's very few. And with exosomes in 2023, when I'm trolling through the actual literature, I can't find one good paper, not one good paper. There are hundreds of papers in regards to exosomes and there's hundreds of theories and postulations about how they work, but there's nothing out there. So I'm not saying that doesn't work and I'm still using it. In fact, I've just started using it. I probably will continue to do so over the next six to 12 months to understand the technology. But it's exciting times because suddenly we have this new molecule. It's not like a dermal filler. It's not like a collagen stimulating filler. It's not like a, it's not like putting hyaluronic acid into your, uh, into your skin. So it doesn't work that way, right? And because of the low downtime, it's not like, for example, CO2 laser or non-ablative laser or something like a TCA or phenol peel. It's got virtually very little downtime. You're looking at the downtime of the delivery system itself, which is often maybe a day, day and a half as well. So this is an important and interesting and also exciting prospect because we're at the dawn of a new way of regenerating skin. So guys, bear with us. We'll figure out whether exosomes work or not and stay tuned. I hope you liked that quick summary. That's my honest opinion about exosomes. In summary, I think it's got potential, but watch this space. Guys, please like, comment, share, and subscribe.